So I'm just going to download a copy of that so that we can then include it in our site today. One other thing, if anybody else wants to do that might be helpful is we should probably also make a favorite icon with one of these. So if anybody has time, maybe even a break to grab, I'm going to use the third one and run it through a, an ICO converter online and maybe wants to share a link in the chat, then we can replace the default favicon that comes with our Visual Studio project. We can replace it with a little uh, version of our logo. Um, so here's what we're going to do this week. Well, we've taken care of our poll. Um, I want to go over assignment 1B, um, which is due in three weeks. It's lots of time. I've never given that much time for this part of the project before. But, you know, considering that we're doing remote learning, um, that I thought it would be probably a good idea to give you guys a little bit of extra time uh, for that. So we're going to go over that. We're going to open up our project. And today we're going to really sort of focus on, um, on view syntax. So we've seen a few sort of uh, ASP.NET tags and directives inside of our HTML that are not standard HTML. We want to explore some more of them, some more of the tags and directives that we're going to be using on a regular basis. So we'll kind of do that as a little bit of a group activity. Um, in a bit. And then the other thing we'll want to do before we leave today, today's class won't be too long. I'm sure we're going to be, we shouldn't be any more than two hours today, um, is we're going to start working with our database next week. And um, so this week we want to make sure, I want to make sure that before you go, that everybody sets up the software that we're going to need in order to be able to use uh, the database starting next week. So We'll go and open up, let's go in, into assignments. So I've received most of the assignment 1A. So I think there's 21 students in the class. I think I've got 18 of them. So if you're one of the few students who haven't submitted this, please submit it uh, by five o'clock today and submit your project first on the, on the project website for approval and then the document, because this is worth 5%. It's five easy percent, but um, you need to submit this plan in the next day or two, um, or you're going to wind up getting zero on it. Okay. So let's look at assignment 1B. So assignment 1B will be due on Sunday, the 18th of October. So that's not the holiday. It's not the Thanksgiving weekend. It is the weekend after. I'm not asking you to work. Uh, and submit in the middle of uh, the long weekend on Thanksgiving. It's due afterwards. So this component is worth the largest part um, of the whole project. So it's worth 15%. So what you're going to do is start to build the act, the project that you planned out and submitted uh, over this past week. So you're going to create a new project, a new ASP.NET, core web app, MVC web application. You'll need to enable authentication and HTTPS just like we did. And you don't need to invite me again. You don't need a new repository. Just submit the same link that you already submitted in assignment one. Okay. The other thing you'll be submitting is a link to your live site. I'm going to recommend the easiest way to deploy your site to the internet is to use um, Azure and we'll look at doing that in the next week or two. So you basically just need to give me two links. Here's my repository link. Here's the link to Azure that runs my site. Right. Um, your project is an individual project. Okay, it's not group work. You can't work with someone else and submit the same project or two versions of the same project to me. Okay, so the minimum penalty for failing to submit independent work is a zero on the assignment, which is worth 15%, okay? I will check the code. If I question whether the code you've given me is your own work, then we're gonna have an online a, a, a meeting. You'll need to have your camera and your mic on and you'll be asked to explain things in the project to verify that it is your own work, okay? Um, lastly, our, our video game store, that's there for you as a reference. But you can't just take my a copy of that off of GitHub 
or your own copy and just change around a few things and submit it for the assignment. You have to build a totally separate project. And I think we did talk about this last week, but I'll just go over this about using code that you find online or in a textbook or something like this. Warning, Braden. Can you do it? Yes, you can, but there are some conditions. So the conditions are, if you find code from outside of class, any resource, a tutorial, a video, a textbook that you want to use, you can use it with these conditions. Number one, you put a comment in the code saying with a link to where the code came from. Number two, it shouldn't be any more than 10% of your project. So you can't find a tutorial site with a GitHub repository and just copy verbatim, copy the entire thing. Okay, so you can use pieces of someone else's code, but it can't be your whole project. You're building something of your own. You're not just going to replicate someone else's work. Okay. Um, so you should include any comments and links around that code that explains what it does. And the last thing is if you want to use code you found somewhere else, please send me a link before. Just send me an email, send me a link and explain what it is you want to use from that uh, from that code and how you plan to use it and why. And uh, I'll approve it. Okay, But you need to ask for permission first. You can't submit your project and then ask for permission to use someone else's code. You need to check with me first. Okay, So if there's any doubt about that, easiest thing is just ask. Okay. So now for the setup of your project. So to, to create your project, you're going to go through the same steps that we've already been doing with the, we've already done over the first two classes. We're going to create a new project in Visual Studio. You pick the .NET Core web application, and then you pick the MVC template. And then you'll want to change the authentication from none to individual user accounts. The second thing you'll need to do is you'll need to set up a database. Um, the easiest way to do this will be in the Azure portal, and we'll look at doing this in class next week. You're then going to need to build models in your web project and tables in your database, and they'll match. So if you had three tables in the database that were, say, students, courses, and instructors, you would have three models in your models folder in Visual Studio, college students, instructors, and courses. Now, you don't have to manually build both. So Visual Studio has tools that if you build your database tables first, you can then automatically generate the model classes from the database, or you can go the other way. I'm probably going to do it the other way in class where we're going to create the model classes like we did last week with our category model. And then we can use a command in Visual Studio that will generate the matching tables in the database. So this is a neat feature of, of Visual Studio that it has these code generation tools. You can do it either way. I'm going to show you both, but typically the easiest way is to do the models first. And then you're going to generate controllers and views. Um, and these controllers and views, they're going to have most of the functionality you need. You're not going to have to write all the code for doing create, read, update, and delete. Visual Studio is going to do that for you. So we're going to actually look at this next week in class. You can add some comment to your add some comments to your code. So we've kind of already done this. We've taken care of this in assignment 1A. You guys have already decided and submitted your projects. So then you're going to build the new project. There should be some relationships between your tables. So some kind of one to many parent child relationship. You will have to determine what those relationships are based on what kind of application you're building. You'll then use the scaffolding tools those are the code generation tools in visual studio to build your controllers and views so you don't have to code those things manually you're going to modify your layout template you're going to add some links in the nav bar that go to the index views of your new controllers and then you're going to customize kind of the look and feel of the site a little bit so we've already done this a little bit we'll do more of it over the next few classes so you'll want to add a descriptive title and maybe a logo in the nav bar and the page titles. 
In the footer, you want to put your name, your student number, and the course name and code. Uh, and I know in the discussion board from last week when I asked people, you know, what are other things you still want to learn? Many people mentioned, I want to learn how do I customize it? How do I make the site my own? So we'll look at doing some more of these things over the next few weeks. You'll want to change the default content that Microsoft gives you on the homepage. I think it just says, welcome to .NET Core with a link to the documentation. So your homepage should include a description of your site. You might put in some images, whatever you think is appropriate to go on the home page. And then you'll use GitHub. You'll need to make at least four commits and we'll create a readme file, which we'll do today. I know we created a readme file with PHP, we'll do it today. Some of you already created the readme file in your repositories, that's fine. So we'll look at how do we kind of fill the readme file out that describes our project. And then you'll want to publish the site to the Azure web server so that your site is live on the internet. And you'll include that link in both in the README file and on Blackboard. Few options for bonus marks. You can customize the theme. So you could go and find a third party theme and add it in, or you could do your own CSS work. I know a lot of you are really talented designers and uh, very capable with CSS. So you can customize and write your own CSS for a bonus mark. It is only one bonus mark, so don't get carried away. The focus is on doing .NET, so you don't, I don't want you spending hours and hours and hours on the CSS. Bonus number two is implement something in .NET MVC that we haven't learned in class. So any new feature that you want to add, and just make sure you list it in the README file so that I know to look for it and can give you your bonus mark. So these items are optional. So here's the rubric that breaks this down. A couple marks for your database setup and the model generation. Again, we'll do these things next week. Diane, I'll just get to your question one second. And then we'll also look at scaffolding, auto-generating the controllers and models. A couple marks for customizing your site. So you personalize it, you make it your own. A couple marks for version control and for your server deployment. Can we go for... Um, Diana, yeah, absolutely. Those would be examples of features you could do. You don't have to ask for permission to implement the bonus feature. The only thing I ask is if you do one of the bonus features, make sure you list it in the readme file on GitHub because your bonus feature may just be code. It may be doing an advanced coding technique. And that's something I don't actually visually see on the website. So as long as you list it in your README file on GitHub, here is my bonus feature that I implemented, then I can give you marks for it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's up to your imagination, as long as it isn't something I've taught you. So if you show me you've learned something independently with .NET and documented it, then I'll give you a bonus mark for that. I will actually show you, I have a sample project from last year. Um, so I can actually show you what like the completed, a completed project might look like, um, which may help. Um, just flesh out the idea a little bit more for you. So this is the full completed project. It would include both assignment one and assignment two, but you can kind of get an idea of what the finished product might do. So this student built a project tracker. Now he didn't do a lot of work customizing the design. So we put his name, student number in the footer. It's deployed up to the Azure site. So here I can see he's customized the nav bar, he's changed the header and he's put in these links so I can view projects and tasks. And then if I log in, now the login and register, that's the second part of the project. You don't have to do it now. But when a user is logged in, not only can I view, but I can also add or edit
or delete. So as an anonymous user, I can view the data, but once I register and log in, I can modify data. So the registration and login, we're not doing for part one. For part one, any user can create, read, update, or delete. We'll add the authentication for part assignment two. So you don't have to do that for right now. Okay, so you have 20 days to do this. Um, and considering that Visual Studio is going to generate a lot of the code for us, that's lots and lots of time, especially because every, most of you have already created your idea. You already have decided on what it is you're going to build and how it should work. Um, are there any other questions about assignment 1B? Sure, Liam, go ahead. You can use your mic or the chat, whatever's easier. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the quizzes, the reason you can't find the first quiz is because you have a week to do them. <laughs> so the quiz is open as soon as our lessons are done on Monday, and then you have a week to do them. You don't have to submit them until the following Sunday at five. Yeah, so just so that it's sort of, that, that everyone has the same, same time window, no problem, no problem. I know it's, you know, it's a new class, so things are, things are new. So our quiz for, our quiz based on this lesson, it'll open today and it'll be open until next Sunday. It closes at five o'clock. So you basically have six plus days to do every quiz. And considering there's only five questions, you know, I'm sure you can, you'll probably be able to fit that in. Okay. Um, any other questions, particularly related to the assignment before we move into today's lesson? Okay. Okay, so let's open up. Um, let's open up our game project, or get me a game project. So this is our project from our project from last week that we created. If you don't have the project, you can download it from my GitHub repository. My GitHub, uh, my the GitHub home, my GitHub homepage is in Weekly Learning Tools and Resources, and you can download the project from there. Excuse me. So here was our index page as we left off last week. So I want to launch my site, get it loading in the browser and get our local web server running. So I'm gonna click on my debug menu. I'm gonna start without debugging. And my site will load. So last week we made a bunch of changes. We changed the footer a bit. We got rid of the home and privacy links in our navigation bar. We changed the content on the home page. And then we added this, we created a categories controller. So we created this new, full, new file called categories and Visual Studio automatically generated an index view. And then we change the code in the index view so that it would use this category model we generated. So we created this simple category model where every category has a numeric ID and a string value for the category name. 
And then we use this loop to create 10 categories in memory. They don't live in a database. They're just fake. And then we wanted to pass this list of categories to our view. So then we created this index view. And we said at the top, we declared that our view would receive a list of I enumerable, meaning a list of category objects. And then we used a loop to display each one of these. And then we made these links so that when we clicked on any one of them, the links called our the browse method that we wrote in this controller. And we added a parameter. So the browse method needed a string parameter called category name. And then we used the view bag to display that value in an H1 tag. Yes, Emily, it is not a silly question, and IE is, is Internet Explorer, yes. So this is how we left off last week. So it was interesting. I, um, I thought it was really, it was very helpful for me. Um, so about half of you, so I gave you a little quick home learning reflection. Uh, I'm not sure how to answer that question, Justin, because I don't know when you left. So um, I asked you in the forum, you know, to tell me what have you learned and um, what was useful and um, what's something you would like to learn. So a lot of people said, okay, I'm starting to get MBC and how the pieces work together, but I, I need more practice. Like it needs to become more familiar. So absolutely, I get that. And we're going to do lots of practice both together in class. And that's part of the value of the assignment. You know, So Young had a really good point. She said, it's like, it's kind of like a spider web where all these pieces are in, interconnected um, and they, they work together, uh, which is a really good, uh, really good way of thinking about it. Um, one of the other, a lot of people talked about wanting to use the database. So again, we're going to, uh, we're going to sort of set up the software for that this week, and we'll get into working with the database next week. I did add something. Um, I did add something to the forum that I'm going to ask everybody to keep in mind and maybe contribute to. Um, which is, uh, bear with me for a second, because Janelle, Janelle posted a good question. So I did have a, do you have a question forum? And Janelle posted something here. So she was working and posted a screenshot and, and got an error. So Janelle, I'm just gonna show this because it's common. So in the view, when she was working, this line, for each category and model, it threw this error. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. This is probably the most common error we get when we're working with ASP.NET. And one of the things somebody had suggested in the forum was, you know, having some kind of resource for when we get errors so that we know where to go. I can't remember who it was who suggested that. If it was you, feel free to take credit for it in the chat for that idea, because I think it's a really good suggestion. So what I'm proposing we do Yeah, so what I'm proposing here in the forum I've created a new thread called the ASP.net error dictionary. So I will encourage you to contribute to this thread if you get an error message or even if I get one in class um if you can make a post in here or, or reply to this one, here's the error we got and here's how to fix it. That way in this thread, we're gonna have kind of like a, a glossary of common mistakes that we get, common error messages in ASP.NET, and then what to do to troubleshoot those errors. So that's gonna help you in your assignment. We might get an error together in class, but if somebody will make a recording, recording of the solution in here, 
then um, we, you guys have a, an easy reference for common errors and how to fix them. So I'll go in here and maybe just make a, a new uh, post. I'll, I'll make a post in this thread. So here's a common error. So if the error is a view crashes with the error, so this was the error you now had, object reference, not set. So we'll just highlight that. Whoops. This usually means no data was passed from the controller to the view. Right, so you know that's exactly right. So for example, return view should be return view some data variable here. So I just have a quick explanation of what the error is. I'm not sure why my highlighting isn't working here. So I put in a description of the error message we got, how we got it and how to fix it. So I'm going to encourage everybody to contribute to this forum as you're working, either if you get an error in class and we fix it together, maybe while I'm teaching, someone can go in and put in a reply, or when you're working on your assignment or doing something, playing around with .NET, I'll encourage you to contribute errors and solutions in here. And that way we've got a sort of a central place where you can go to, uh, to look up your errors. And we can kind of collaboratively add to this as we go through the course. Okay, so um, we've seen, so as I said, today what I wanted to mostly do was look at some of the view syntax that we see in ASP.NET. So we've identified that our server side tags usually will start with the at symbol Visual Studio highlights them in yellow. We've talked about the view bag a couple times now, so that should start to be familiar. We've also talked about this ASP controller and ASP action. So these are directives that get at properties that get added right into our HTML, but they run on the server. And then there's some other, some other components. So um, what we want to do is look at some of the other common syntax elements that we're going to see in, uh, in ASP.NET. And I've called this, you'll see the term, I've used the term Razor. Razor is just the name Microsoft has given their view syntax. They've called it Razor. Uh, previously, they used a different type of HTML formatting for their views, and they've used this Razor syntax for a number of years now. That includes things like these at symbols and these ASP dash tags that we see here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new page. We're going to create a new view, but we're going to use some of the Visual Studio code generation tools. And it's going to include some other 
new ASP tags we haven't seen. And then we're going to kind of break off into a, do a little group activity um, where we're going to kind of identify and define what some of these syntax item elements are. So we're going to go over to Solution Explorer. And we're going to, we'll open up our categories controller. And we'll make a new method here. We'll create a new public method. All our methods will, they're always going to return this I action result class. And we'll call this method add category. So what we want to have happen on this page is we want to display an empty form where a user could add a new category. We're not actually going to save the data to the database. For today, we're really mostly interested just in the views. And actually, here's an example of an error right here that we're going to see when we create a new method. Maybe somebody could even add this, add a new reply to that new message thread on Blackboard. So when I put it, when I mouse over, it's red. It's telling me not all code paths return a value. Um, can somebody translate that error into English? <laughs> what does that mean? Not all code paths return a value. How come Visual Studio is showing a red underline? Right. Yeah, we should return a view or return something, some kind of action result, which, as Diana, as you've said, is uh, typically most of the time in .NET MVC, it's going to be a view. So if we just return a view, and Emily, yeah, that's probably, I assume that's what you meant. Yeah, we need a link to a view. So now if we add a view, our error goes away. So if somebody might want to add that error into our error dictionary, so what is that? So not all code paths return a value in a controller method. So this is the error. Somebody feels like adding it to the error dictionary. And then you can add what the fix is. So the, the solution Make sure the method returns a view. So by adding this code, our error goes away. So if someone's, maybe I'll carry on, but maybe if someone's willing to able to add the, that note into our error thread, then again, if, when you get this error, you'll have a place to reference. So all we want to do is load a new view here. We've done this many times now over the past few weeks. So we want a form. If we were working in PHP, we would have to build out the whole form, write all the form tags. Visual Studio tells us, no, 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 you don't have to do all that. It's OK. We'll build the form for you. Sounds great. Yes, it is. So click on Solution Explorer. Now, I realize some of you won't have all these options. I think a few Mac users, Mac Visual Studio for Mac, you won't necessarily have all the options. Um, so you may have to build it manually, but here are the, the here's the way to generate it if you can. So we're going to go down to Views, and inside our Categories folder, we need to make a new view with this same name, Add Category. So I'm going to right-click my Views and Categories. I'm going to right-click and choose add a view. So we have two options here. We get an empty view and we get a razor view. So far, we've only added empty views. This time we're going to pick a razor view because this is going to include some generated code. So a razor view with or without a, a strongly typed model. We want a view with a model this means Visual Studio will, will match, it will tie our view form to our category model. So let's see how this works. It's pretty cool. So click on Add. And then we get this little pop-up window. So the name of the view 
what should we call it? It defaults to the name view. We don't want to call it that. So in this first text box at the top, I'm going to fake that out. What should we call this view? You got it, Liam. Thank you. Because we want it to match the method name in the controller. So then it's asking for a template and it defaults to empty without model. Yep, just one second, Emily. So which of these templates do we want? There's view templates for create, delete, details, edit, empty, or list. Right, okay, yeah. Farouk and Emily, I'll be with you in a minute. I'm gonna go through the process and I'll come to your questions. So we want the create template this is going to give us a blank, generate a blank form. And once I pick create, so you'll notice at first when it says empty, our model class is disabled. I can't click this second drop down. But if I change empty to create, it then unlocks the model box. So which model do we want to pick? Uh, create is the template, yep, but what about the model in the second drop down? Yeah, so you got it, Farouk. We want a page that will give us, will create, <laughs> it happens, a category. This da data context, we don't need this yet because we're not connected to the database yet. And then it says use a layout page. So now we want to browse to our layout file so that our new view also includes the header and footer and our JS and CSS links. So over in this, make sure use a layout page is checked. Yeah, just give me a second to finish it and then yes, I will. So then I'm going to go to views and shared and I'm going to pick the layout template. So now we've set up everything we need here. Our view name is add category, which matches our method name. The template is create, the model is category, and it's going to use our shared layout. And I'll click add here. In Visual Studio, it says it's scaffolding. So the scaffolding, that's just a fancy word for auto code generation. So we can hand code the views. And if you're a Mac user, you, you might have to do that. If you're on Windows, um, it has these tools to generate the code. Yeah. I like it too, Fruk. It saves us tons of time. So here is our form. So at the top, you'll notice it automatically lists the model. It says this form, rather than receiving a model, it's going to submit a mo new model to the controller to be saved. It lists the title, it links to our layout file. Oh, thanks for posting that in the chat, Diana. And it gives us a form with inputs and even validation. If you need to delete it hung, you just view it, find it in Solution Explorer, right click and you can delete and then you can redo it. So I'll save, I will push this up to GitHub as well. So I'll just go to my changes. And put in lesson three, add category form. And I'll commit and push. Okay, I've, I've updated the uh, repository as well on GitHub. Sorry, it's just pushing right now. I'll add my repository link to the chat as well. If you need to go and grab it.
Yep. Thanks for doing that, Diana. So you can grab it from the chat. My push isn't. I'm not sure what's going on. It's having a little trouble getting it up to GitHub. There it goes. So if you need the file, you can always go into my repository and it's here under views and categories. And you can click on raw and just get the HTML. So here's a link directly to the HTML if you need it as well, if it was a little hard to see in the chat. Okay, there were a few other questions in the chat. So just let me scroll back up. Okay, Emily, uh, you were first. If you want to go ahead with your question. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just got really confused. So I know like when we first did the controller and then we put a method that returns view and then it was like we are browsing. But then as you continue, there was the add category and you return view again, but I didn't know why we put that method. I know some links don't return anything, so that's why you had to put that method. But from there, like I was I was kind of confused, a bit lost. Ah, okay. So what we're doing, we're creating this method, this add category <laughs> method, because mm -hmm. we want to create a new view in the project, okay. a new page. So oh, this okay, method is going to display. <laughs> so now under categories, mm -hmm. we want to be able to load this. So we created that oh, method okay. to load this new view. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, there were a couple of other questions. I think Farouk, you had a question as well. Um, for Mac users, it might be add new scaffolding. Uh, okay, Farouk, go ahead and let's see. Why don't you share and we'll look at it. Okay, so go back to your Solution Explorer. Okay, add, view. Right, so yeah, this is the option we wanted. Yeah, add MVC view. That's fine. It's the same thing. Um, what version are you using, Farouk, of Visual Studio? Okay, and community enterprise. That may be why the terminology may just be a little different in the community edition. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, no problem. Okay, so let me turn my screen share back on. So we now have this form, so we didn't have to do anything. The form is auto-generated. So let's just add a link to it. So right now on our categories, let's add a link that says add a category. And yes, I realize we would never ask customers to add categories. This would be a private function, but we won't be able to make it private until later in the course when we add security. So let's go to our 
index categories index view. And we've got a heading here that says pick a category with the loop. In here, let's just add a link to our add category form. So we can add our ASP controller it's categories. And then we want to set up the action. So what should our action be that will open up our new form? Yeah, thanks, Farouk. So we want this link to call the add category method. And then our link can just say, add a new category. So I've just added line four to the category index. So now if we load it, above our list, we have this link that says add a new category. And then it opens up our form. And notice the form, it even recognizes, well, ID is a number, name is text, because it's tied, our form is tied to our model. And our model sets up a numeric ID and a text value for name. So this is a much, much faster and easier way to design and develop our forms. Now we may want to change them a bit, but we don't have to get to write all the HTML from scratch. Saves us lots of time. Okay, it is uh, 11.54 on my clock. We've been working hard for 55 minutes. It is great, absolutely. Um, so I would, I'm going to propose we take a 10 minute break here and come back at 12.05. I'm going to go step away for a few minutes and I'll stop the recording. Please remind me to start my recorder again when we come back. Okay, I'll see you in 10 minutes.